Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is a podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Lee Brown, and you are listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, we have a real estate story coming from north of the border from our Canadian friend, Jean Richet. Jean, say hello to the guest. Hello, everybody. So, you reached out to me to tell me a story about real estate, but first of all, tell our listeners where you're from and what you do that's related to real estate. My name is Jean Richet. I'm here in Ottawa, Ontario, in Canada. And I'm a licensed real estate agent, and I've been licensed for about uh, 14, 15 years now. Okay, so that many years in real estate, you've got story after story after story. So just asking you for one crazy story is going to be the tricky part. Okay, so ground rules of the podcast. We are all short episodes here on crazy shit in real estate because people have ADD nowadays. And no F-bombs and no GDs because I'm allergic to those. But anything else flies except for names and addresses. So that way, if the guilty party happens to come across the podcast, only they can identify themselves. So with that, I can't wait to hear your story, Jean. Tell us all about your crazy experience. Excellent. So what happened is that uh, we had a, a, a listing that came out, a uh, big house, single guy. The house was a little bit old and dated, and it smelled a lot like smoke. But we had priced it pro- accordingly to, to the condition of the house. It was this for about 30 days or so. And then we get an offer on a Saturday afternoon. It was co-listed with me. The other agent calls me. And she didn't feel comfortable going on a Saturday night to meet this kind of creepy old guy. And she was just like a little bit reluctant. I said, well, just no worries. Not a big deal. Just push it till tomorrow. So she scheduled it for Sunday morning around 11, 30, 12 noon. And to go negotiate the offer and go over it with her. 12 o'clock noon shows up. She knocks on the door. No answer. She rings the bell. She walks around the house. She can hear a TV. And then uh, the car is inside the garage, but no answer. So she calls me up. She goes, what do I do? So, well, not a whole lot you can do because the guy's not there. He's not answering. So you can't negotiate it. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, still no answer. So she calls me back. And then I said, look, there's nothing we can do. We have to wait till he gets back to you. And at this time, the other agent, the agent that had the offer, was starting to panic a little bit. Like, you know, how come you're not presenting my offer? What's going on? The irrevocability was 6 p.m. that night. So we had till 6 to negotiate the offer, counter, or reject, or accept. So anyways, we leave it like that. 6 o'clock rolls by. She calls the seller's brother. And he says, ah, don't worry. He's on vacation. He's probably just out partying and not, nothing to worry about. So anyways, we call the other agent, let her know, look, nothing's happening. We're not... We're not going to get an answer tonight, so we'll go back tomorrow and take a look at it. Monday morning rolls around, and then she says, look, you know, can you, the other agent that we were co-listed, calls me up and says, do you mind coming with me? I don't feel comfortable going there alone. So we get to the house, and just as we're driving up to the house, we see there's a police car parked in, the, in a parking lot not too far from the house, and I jokingly say, ah, don't worry about it. At least we have the police nearby in case we need them. So we get to so the he, house. So the policeman wasn't at the house. He's just like staking it out or something. No, no, no. He was just parked on the, in a parking lot in an arena, not too far from from. Oh, maybe, okay. A two minute drive from the house. So we get to the house. We again ring the bell, knock on the door, see what's happening. Nothing's happening. The car is in the garage. We look inside the house. You know, we still see the coffee machine. You know, three quarters full. It's still on. It's like, oh, does this look different from Saturday when you came? And she couldn't remember. So I was like a little bit odd, so we could still hear the TV blaring. So anyway, so we got the lockbox, open up the door, walk inside the house, the TV's blaring, we're calling out his name, but he's not answering. So anyways, we said, okay, well, let's start scoping out the house and see if we can find something. So we get into into the house, it's a split level, so go up a couple of stairs, I look in the bathroom, and everything seems to be okay, nothing too wild. And then I get to the actual bedroom. So I'm kind of peeking in, okay, what am I going to find in this bedroom? And on his bed, I can see his feet under the covers sticking up. And in my mind, I'm thinking, 
oh my goodness, what am I gonna see inside this bedroom? Is it gonna be horrific? Is it gonna be awful? So I slowly peek around the door and he is just laying flat on his back, two hands on his chest, not moving. So I call to the other realtor, I go, you better come see this. <laughs> so she goes, what's wrong? I said, I think he's dead. So I walk back down the stairs. We said, we got to call 911. We don't know this guy. So call 911. The other agent calls 911. And 911 says, you know, are you, you know, where are you? Who are you? How come you're there? And all this thing. We're realtors. We're, you know, trying to sell this house. So she says, well, the, the lady on 911 says, can you go just touch him to see if he's really dead? I was like, she did not dare you to go touch a man you think is dead. Oh, yes, she did. I was oh. like, I am not touching this dude. <laughs> so, so anyway, so the other realtor was like, ah, I'll go, I'll go touch him, make sure he's dead. I was like, I'm scared because I think he's going to wake up and jump and try to get rid of us. <laughs> so as she touched him, the guy was definitely not alive anymore. So the police come within a minute, minute and a half, and then they're starting to drill us as to why we're inside the house that no you know Holy nothing is smokes. Oh. <laughs> so anyway so by this time we're just like they they tell us you know just get out of the house you don't need to be here and whatnot but the worst part is that all, as all of this is going on the other realtor who had the buyers was drilling us like what's going on how come you're not responding to our offer my clients are interested you're just playing games and it's like we're not playing games. We're trying to get rid of the, you know, get a, get a hold of this person, but he's not returning our calls. So anyways, by the end of this, we told the other agent, look, we're sorry. The deal is dead because the client's not available. And then the funniest thing or the oddest thing is that she turns around and says, had you gone on Saturday night to negotiate the offer, we might have a deal today. You've got to be kidding me. So it's y'all's fault that your client died and the deal didn't get put together. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, just stop. That's so bad. Yeah. So anyways, it was just one of those things. And we found out after that the um, owner, the, the seller that passed away, passed away of a, of a massive heart attack. But when we got there, we had, he had one of these big, you know, the big round Tupperware bowls yeah. filled, filled to the top with hand rolled cigarettes. Well, I guess if you're going to go, you go with a smile on your face, right? Yeah, I think that's what happened there. <laughs> so, so. What, did the brother invite y'all to the funeral since you had been so integral to the situation? I mean, were you part of the closure? No, we weren't. It was just, a, I think it was just an odd situation where he was living there. The, 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 one of the brothers was living there. The other brother was out and the mother was in a, in a nursing home. So it wasn't a very close knit family and they just kind of, did it very quietly and we weren't involved in anything. And till this day, that house has not hit the market again. It's still in the, in the mother's name and we haven't seen or heard anything from it ever again. That's kind of creepy in and of itself right there. Yep, pretty much. Man, so sometimes this would fall in that category of things you can never expect about why you might lose a listing. That's right. We had no control. We did everything we could, but at the end of the day, we couldn't... Uh, we came together. <laughs> he wasn't going to be able to sign the paperwork. <laughs> no extension, no price adjustments, no nothing. <laughs> but you still got yelled at by the other agent who should have had just a little measure of grace and understanding. My goodness. Absolutely. Yeah, that was the, it was the funny but not funny part of what all happened there. I can say this is the first episode we've had with a, um, an agent who's walked in and touched a dead seller. So kudos to you for... Not just bringing us a Canadian story, but a wildly creepy story. Absolutely. I have a few more, so a few episodes later on, I'll reach out to you again. Oh, that, if this house hits the market, you're going to have to come back and do an update episode and tell us what you found inside that house, because there's got Absolutely. to be some more stories in there. Yeah, for sure. So, John, if anybody is looking for a real estate professional in the Ottawa area, how could they find you? Uh, I'm pretty much all over social media. My website is my name, Uh If you just Google me, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, 
I'm all over the place. Well, I'm glad you're on Snapchat because I'm on it, but I don't understand it. So if you're listening to this episode, I will include all of Jean's contact information in the show notes for longevity. And if you are a realtor, lender, vendor, inspector, or a consumer who's got a story about something crazy you have encountered in the world of real estate that looks nothing like HGTV, please message me. We'd love to feature you as we help you understand what real estate looks like from the trenches as all of us work so hard to provide a more professional environment for all of our clients who trust us with their real estate needs. Jean, thank you for showing up on the show to share that story. And we wish you all the best in the next listing. And hopefully everybody stays alive till the end. Excellent. Thanks very much. It was nice uh, being on the show. All right. Don't forget to subscribe for more episodes, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us this week on the Crazy Shit in Real Estate podcast. If you liked what you heard, please visit crazyshitinrealestate.com where you can access the full show notes for this episode, additional content produced exclusively for listeners, and much, much more.